All right, all right, and we are live. Hey, everyone. Hey, everyone in the prophetic heart healing community. It's go. It's so good seeing y'all. Want to make sure that we're on the right page right here, and we are perfect. Well, awesome, guys. Well, hey, I am. Uh, if you don't know me already, my name is Drock Tarango. I'm the co-founder of Prophetic Heart Healing and the Heart Healing Network with my wife Elise Tarango and boy, we have a story for you. I have an incredible guest who is smiling right now. Uh, let me tell you, this woman is a leader. She's a minister. She has become more of a friend uh, inside the PHH community. Um, she is someone that hosts just, you know, um, so much of the, the community aspect of helping people come on in, get loved on. Um, and I just wanted to actually just highlight her story um, you know, I think it's so powerful that we hear, you know, other people that they, they, you know, they come into the community and they're like, wow, like, man, there, there is so much um, wealth of knowledge. There's so much wealth of freedom uh, in the PHH community. And um, I, I, I wanted, I wanted everyone to hear Cindy's story. <laughs> so, so Cindy, man, let me tell you, working with Cindy, this woman is a powerful punch um, she is someone who is a, a weapon used by the Lord uh, to really break through uh, and bring freedom to people. And um, so I just wanted to honor you, Cindy. And, and Cindy, do you mind, can you tell us your story? And, and really, Cindy, <laughs> I, I, really, I, I love to just first ask you this one question, Cindy. Um, you know, what has the Lord done in you throughout the PHH experience, you know, the PHH family, uh, the community? Uh, we're all here soon. Okay. Well, um, you know, before PHH, I've, I've been a, a pastor for over 20 years. And, and then before that, I've always worked in ministry most of my adult life. And so um, before PHH, I, you know, I have, I've always had a strong relationship with God. I've always had a sense of his presence and speaking to me, but I went through a period where I was just discouraged. Um, I felt like we, I was working and working and teaching and preaching and working with people. And I, I was really just struggling with, um, how do I get people to see the power of God? Yeah. How do I help people understand that he's real and that he's active and he wants to be a part of your life? And so I was really um, just, yeah, just discouraged in ministry. You know, it was always the same issues. It was always doing the same thing and not really seeing people's lives changed. And so I had really just started praying and even just reading through scripture, you know, you see you know, you see the lame men walk and, and you see people raised, you know, from the mm -hmm. dead and, um, and all of the things that happen in scripture, the power that you see of God. And, and I went through just a time of just praying, God, I want to see that power alive in my ministry, alive in my life. Um, I don't want my Christianity be, to be just religion. Um, and just doing, and that's what I felt like I was doing is just doing, 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 and there was nothing alive. And so, you know, I had gone through probably a year or more of just praying that, um, and praying that. And even though I had a, I felt like I had a strong relationship with God, it was within my ministry, seeing, seeing it come alive in other people. And so I, you know, I just opened an email once one day, <laughs> I, the email just popped up. And I just had that sense, you know, I just felt the, like the spirit leading and I, I jumped on and it wasn't very much. And I thought, Hey, you know, and it sounded right up my alley. So um, it was definitely so I jumped in. And mm -hmm. for the weekend, and um, I was like, man, this is like speaking my language, <laughs> you oh, know, sorry. listening, listening to God. And, and it's, you know, for all of my, all my life, um, as a Christian, which I was, I accepted Christ as a small child. And so, um, as, uh, throughout all of the years I have, that was my relationship with God was listening to him, allowing him to come in and to heal me and allowing him to speak into my life. Yeah. And now I found a tool 
that mm-hmm. I could share it with other people because that was something I struggled with is, is trying to get other people to understand mm-hmm. how to do that, how to hear God's voice. I just assumed everybody heard God's <laughs> voice. Yeah. And so, I, you know, that first weekend was so exciting. I, I mean, it was like, I, you know, you break up into the small groups and it was like, man, it just lit a fire in me. And I wasn't able to start the mentorship, but um, right away, but, you know, three months later, I was able to jump in. And so once I got into mentorship, you know what, it was like, it brought me back to life. I, you know, yeah. that, and that's how I felt. I, I literally felt like life just pouring back into me, that mm. excitement, that enthusiasm, that was just for me, you know, mm. just, and even just allowing Christ, you know, his presence to, to speak into my life again, but yeah. even just praying with other people and, and mm. seeing them um, change, being a part of that revived me. Yeah. It revived yeah. my excitement for ministry yeah. again. It just made me passionate again about mm. sharing it with everybody else. And mm. um, because that's always been my life goal is how to share Christ with everybody else, how mm. to get them um, to come alive <laughs> and to realize how awesome it is to be in relationship with Christ. Mm-hmm. And, um, and so, yeah, that's how I felt like it was like it reignited my ministry. It reignited my, my enthusiasm and my joy. I, you know, even when I was facilitating and not necessarily even receiving, even just facilitating, man, the Holy Spirit just washes through you. Mm-hmm. And there are some sessions that, you know, I just felt like, uh, okay, it might not have been much for, that I didn't even hardly do anything. And the other person, you know, the Lord just was like, like, wow, you know, just like blowing them away. And that like, yeah, it was like, this is what ministry is. This is because it's not about me. It's not about my work. It's not about my trying harder. It's just allowing the Holy Spirit to come through and to be there. And I get fed just as much being able to minister with other people, you know, just being able to be in the same presence of it. You know, the Bible tells us where two or three or more are gathered, I'm there with you. And that's to me, that's like the foundation of this. You know, I have, like I said, my whole life, I have always spent time listening to the Holy Spirit, listening to him speaking to me. But when you bring community into it, when you bring two other people into it, it's like, it's, it's like, it's, it's tenfold. I mean, it's, it's so much more powerful. I, I'm blown away at, at what happens when there's three of us versus when there's one, one of me. Mm. <laughs> it's yeah. just, it, it is the neatest thing. And, and it's mm. hard to even explain it. You have to experience it, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, because yeah. it, it just is what it is. I mean, it's just so exciting. You know, it's, I just want to share it with everybody else. <laughs> Oh, amen, Cindy. And I, I love yeah. that, Cindy. You know, it's like you have been in the church space, currently a pastor, yep. um, and you came in uh, and and you received yourself, right? You received right. yourself. And then also right. you actually became a facilitator of right. the HH modality, which brought you even more revival to yourself, your soul, your spirit. And exactly. I love that. I, I think that's just so profound. You know, I think that sometimes we can get kind of caught up in like the, like, oh man, is this another thing to do? Exactly. It's like, like, no, no, this, this is going to revive you. <laughs> well, and it's almost addicting. Um, mm-hmm. You know, if I go through a period of time where I'm not having any sh- sessions, it's yeah. like, I'm going through withdrawal. It's like, okay, yeah. wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and granted, we always have that, um, you know, that ability to be in, in the presence of God. Yeah. But, um, you know, 
scripture talks over and over about community being in community and and that's what this is about it's about being in community in the presence of god and that's what's so neat about it and there's Mm -hmm. and it is it's just a powerful thing being with others and and in a safe place in a place that's that's lifting you up filled with love and acceptance yeah. You know, it's just, um, yeah, it's an exciting thing. Oh, man, such such good yeah. words. So, yeah, yeah. I love that. And, you know, even just kind of dialoguing with you, you know, we've had some we've had some people who they have felt like they're in a cave, kind of just right. like in their own world. Right. Um, and, you know, we, we've just seen so many people come in and really take that step forward to, OK, I, I do want to be involved with this prophetic heart healing thing. And right. and how like they have become the biggest champions in the community, you know, and I'm like, wow, Lord, you're just doing some awesome stuff right. there. And, um, and, and Cindy, I wanted to ask this as well. Like, man, so you showed us just kind of what it looked like to or, or what happened inside of you. Right. You got right. revived. Right. Like, man, the Lord's just like unlayering some stuff. And Right. And as a pastor, right, someone who you're responsible for, you know, a bunch of people, right, you care right. about them, you want to get you want to give right. them your best, right? right. Um, I, I want to ask this, what has the Lord done through you? What has changed yeah. in yeah. your ministry? What, what, like, t- I, we're all ears in me, come on. <laughs> So, you know, my ministry, um, my church is a small church. Um, We work with very broken people. So we have a shelter attached to us along with some feeding, um, you know, social service type ministries. And, um, and so we have many people, you know, that are connected to our ministry that are struggling. And, you know, one of my first outside sessions was um, with a gentleman who was struggling with addiction. Mm -hmm. and and kind of going up and down and i'm telling you it it was miraculous Mm -hmm. and it was one of those sessions um i sat down with him with an intercessor and i'm i I really did not say much i did not do much and um the lord just came over him and he Mm -hmm. just started bawling i mean he was just Mm -hmm. crying and he's like he's like i didn't realize what you were going to do with me (laughs) (laughs) and he was and the lord just man filled him with his love and yeah. his acceptance it was like he was able to just wash away some of the guilt and just some of the pain um and and i'm telling you i really didn't do much yeah. <laughs> i mean I, you know it was really it was it was not me it was just the holy spirit and being in yeah. that presence and um and it was so neat because I got to see a change in him. Mm-hmm. I, you know, afterwards, it, it was like you just saw him come alive. And yeah. um, and a few, even a few, probably about a month or so later, um, he was starting to struggle again a little bit. Mm-hmm. And and I was in a busy time and I couldn't, I had struggled with making time. And and he came back to me one Sunday and he said, you know what? I spent time with the Lord and he came over me again. And he just so it was like. Like it, it, it was even the ability to show him how to do it and just oh, to say mm-hmm. yes. So it was like, I literally have seen a life change in him. Yeah. Um, I, you know, another lady I did not long ago yeah. who has several struggles. Again, it was like the yeah. Lord just came over her and, mm-hmm. and she just was so filled with love and, the sh- yeah. and just seeing her again afterwards within the groups and and at church and in in our different you know groups that we have the joy that was just overflowing for her and she i can't tell you how many times she'd grab my hand and she'd say why did you choose me that was the most that was the most amazing thing I've ever done. Wow. Come on. <laughs> it, it was, it was such a, it's such a cool thing. And I've seen that over and over in several people, even just the ability um, as, it, as they're walking in their relationship and God calling them into more ministry, 
into helping more into the church. And it's not me going to them and saying, will you do this or will you do that? No, it's the yeah. Holy Spirit coming to them and saying, oh, yeah. you need to do more. You need to yeah. do this. Mm -hmm. um, so within ministry, it is the coolest thing. It is no yeah. longer me coming to them and saying, you need to do this, you know, teaching them what the Lord is saying, teaching yeah. them what the Lord, it is the Holy Spirit coming to them mm -hmm. and yeah. teaching them and doing stuff. I have one lady that um, that is also she's a single woman and a pastor um, in more of an inner city uh, situation. And and it, it has just been such an exciting thing. We have kind of a, a regular meeting now um, of a prayer time because she says it has helped her so much in her vision and in just being able to to hear the Lord as she's working in these in these times, um, you know, what to do next, where to go. Um, it has been such a cool thing. And, and she just over and over, she says, this is, this has really changed my ministry. Yeah. So, it, it, you know, and I've seen it working with people who are ministry, people who have nothing, you know, it, wow. it's, it's just, a, a, you know, when you're spending time with God, mm -hmm. Yeah. In his presence, in community, listening to him, mm. it, it, it just lights a fire. Yeah. It is, it, you know, it changes your whole relationship with Christ. It changes your whole meaning of what it means to be a Christian. Yeah. You know, it, it's no longer about doing this and doing that or living like yeah. this or living like that. Mm -hmm. It's about a relationship. It's about yeah. being in communion. And and when, you know, the Bible talks about being in prayer continually. Yeah. When mm -hmm. you go through PHH, it's almost like that's what happens yeah. is because it's not just in those moments. You walk away and it's still that fire is still going. And so mm -hmm. you are in this. It's it's like it ignites this communion that yeah. happens with uh, to you from morning till night. Come it's on. just mm -hmm. and and the neat thing is as you're walking through this and as you're getting on fire, you know, when things start, it's like, you know, when something's wrong does yeah. does that make sense it's oh, like yeah. oh wait a minute what do i need to do i need to go back you know at mm -hmm. one point um you know something had come up and it's like oh the lord immediately checks you yeah. and i had to go back and and make that right and um and and because you you do get addicted to his presence <laughs> Amen. It's like, it's Amen. like air. It's like yeah. breathing, you know, yeah. it's, it's such a neat experience. Um, yeah. you know, just, just reminded of how much he loves us, yeah. how much he desires us, how yeah. much he has created us for. And, mm -hmm. um, and it, it's just an exciting thing. He doesn't want us to be stay, you know, to stay chained up. Yeah. He doesn't want us to stay bound up. Yeah. Um, you know, the Bible says he came to set us free. Yeah. And that's yeah. what I was struggling with before is it's like I saw everybody in bondage, everybody struggling and and how as a minister, how do I pass on that mm -hmm. freedom? How yeah. do I see? And now using PHH in my ministry, I'm regularly seeing people free set free it, i mean it even changes yeah. our worship meeting you know oh, because people Cindy. are just excited <laughs> you know it's like mm -hmm. it's not just me saying yes praise the lord no it's people in the congregation saying yes praise <laughs> the lord <laughs> cindy I, I have to ask you know uh, you and i we've had an awesome yep. conversation you know as yep. uh, as someone that has you know been a pastor for a decade yes um, and someone that is you know you're in the church space as well you know, something I discovered was there's so much time, effort, energy, attention yes. on, you know, like the, the concierge team, the guest care team, then making sure that the worship songs are perfect. The projector's good. The, right. the sermon's on point, right? We have everything dialed in and you're right. hoping that God can connect with them at the worship, Correct. Service, you know, at, at the sermon. Sometimes he does, sometimes he doesn't. Correct. And, and, and so, you know, it's like, I know I've been a bit discouraged with like, man, I did all this stuff and they didn't connect with the Lord. Oh my gosh. 
But yes. to me, what I'm hearing from you is like, this is something that, that immediately right. you can help people connect to God. Just like that. Tell me a little bit more about that, Cindy. Well, you know, I think that's the beauty of PHH. First of all, you know, it's in, you know, the three, you know, but it's more, you know, one on one. And, um, you know, just bringing them into the presence um, is what changes them, because that's what we're in ministry for is to change lives. And so as we are sitting and praying with people um, and bringing the Holy Spirit in, as the Holy Spirit just is speaking to them and as they begin to see Jesus and where he's working and and as they begin to hear um, from him, that kind of takes care of it. <laughs> I, I mean, it's no longer, it is not my effort anymore. Yes, so good. Do you know what I'm saying? Oh, I mean, yes, because yes. that's what I felt like so many times. It's like I'm working and working. And I felt like I was like that mouse, you know, on the wheel. You're yeah. spinning, 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 and you're not going anywhere. Yeah. And now it's no longer, I, I don't, I'm, I feel like I'm not even working, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. if that makes sense. Yes. I'm, I'm in relationship with people. And to uh, me, that's yeah. not working. Yeah. Um, and when you get to sit in God's presence, that's not working. That's filling, yeah. uh, you know, that's revive, okay. revival. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so it, it just, that's what it just automatically happens. Yeah. If that makes sense. So good. And you know, Cindy, just I, sitting in his I, presence. Yeah. Amen, Cindy. And, and you know, I, I think about just like you and I, we, we talked a while and how it's like, you know, sometimes it's like in a position of leadership, right? You're right. people kind of look to you and you're like, oh, you know, you're amazing. And you're like, thanks, but I'm trying right. to see him. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes. And that's exactly right. And in our ministry, we do work hard. Um, you know, yeah. we have lots of programs that are set up. Um, yeah. our, our ministry is a little more unique than a ch- than an average church and yeah. um, because of the design of it. And, um, and so we do work hard and people, yeah. like I said, people come and they felt loved. They felt, you know, like they were being served. They felt like they were part of a family. Um, yeah. But, you know, I'm not in ministry just to make people feel loved, Mm. to be very honest. And I'm not Mm. in ministry to care for, you know, just to care for the lonely and care for the broken. Mm. I'm really in ministry because I want people to know God. I mean, that's what the core of, Mm. of it, you know, if they haven't gotten, if they haven't fell in love with Jesus, Mm. then I've really wasted my time because, you know, Mm. if they love me, what does that get them? Yeah. You know, and, yeah. and I'm just a person. And to be honest, and that's what I tell them all the time. I'm just a person. You know, I, I have weaknesses, just like the next person. And if you're going to just look at me and be in love with me, I'm going to fail you. I can guarantee you, I will fail you at different times. Because that's what human beings do all the time. And so my desire, my only desire has ever been to get people to be in love with God. That, that has really only been my desire and that they look to him um, for that satisfaction. They look to him because when we're all in love with God, it doesn't matter about all of our failures, you know, and, and and it's like, we all get it, you know, it it, kind of just washes over all of that stuff because we know that we're just human. We know that we're weak without him. Um, But when he comes in and just revives us, we begin to see a whole different picture. You know, it's, it's just, um, and so it, it changes the whole face of ministry. Yeah. Amen. And it's like, you know, the way PHH is structured, it's really for the Lord to do the heavy lifting. Exactly. He's the one it's like, okay, you might admire me as a leader, but I love what right. you said. It's like, if, if people don't fall in love with Jesus by the end of right. this, man, I, I, I messed up. Exactly. So, <laughs> exactly. Love, you know, PHH is structured to where it's like, you get to love and experience the face of Jesus. That's and right. It's like you are going to love Jesus more and more and more. And I'm just the one that's facilitating what's going on. 
And, and Cindy, I'm, I'm also thinking too, you know, some people might watch this interview, hear your story and think, well, Cindy's a pastor. I, I'm not a pastor. <laughs> like, I, I want to ask that, like, from your perspective, is, is this easy? Is it like, can anybody do it? Who is this for? Well, and that's the beauty of it is um, I, it's not for, I mean, it's not just for pastors um, right. because in fact, even sometimes early on, you know, you, you have sessions planned and I get anxious and anxiety would, and I just felt like the Lord said, no, no, you know, because it, and I just heard him say, this isn't about you. You mm -hmm. are not doing this. This is about him working. Mm -hmm. All I have to do is show up. So I've really practiced not even worrying about how to do it, not even worrying about what happens. I'm making no plans. I'm, <laughs> I'm working hard at not even thinking through what I'm going to say, what should be said. Not, and I really do. It, it, the beauty is if you can just, when you get into PHH, you just learn to listen to him because yeah. that's what it's about. It's, it's not even about the formula. Um, you know, there's the outline, but the outline is designed to just listen to him. And you don't have to be a pastor to listen to him, mm -hmm. um, you know, at, at all. And, and, you know, the Bible says that we are all ministers. We yeah. are all yeah. as Christians, our job is to be sharing uh, Christ is to yeah. be, you know, spreading his love and stuff like that. So if you have a passion at all for people mm. and if you and if you're in love with God and you want to share that, this is probably the easiest way. It, it is absolutely mm. the easiest way because it's not about any skill. I don't have to go to college to learn this. <laughs> I don't have yeah. to have any kind of degree. And, you know, even, you know, the Bible talks about how the simple will confound the wise. Mm -hmm. and, wow. and this, he uses the simple so many times. He uses yeah. the people who are uneducated. He uses the people that you would never think <laughs> could do anything. Yeah. Um, and sometimes we don't even think we can do anything. Yeah. And he, he gets like all this glory when yeah. he uses us who are yeah. really nothing to, mm. um, to do miraculous things. Yeah. And um, it, it's really exciting because I'm, you know, I'm not necessarily, I'm, you know, like, I, you know, in our denomination, I don't necessarily have to go to a four year, you know, degree and get a doctorate or anything like that. So I'm not super educated. I come from a very rough background. Um, you know, my mom struggled immensely because she had brain damage. And so she struggled immensely raising children. Yeah. I, you know, it, as a young um, adult, I was so broken. I, I was just so broken. And, and I just, you know, I remember way back then, <laughs> yeah. which many years ago, um, just saying to God, I want you, I, just make me usable. You know, I need, just take it all, whatever you have to do to me, just make me usable. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah. and, and he, he gets glory out of doing that, of taking mm -hmm. simple people and, and using using them to yeah. share his power. Yeah. Um, so it really, so you don't have to be anything. In fact, I think it's almost a disadvantage if you're, you know, <laughs> if you're so, you know, sometimes we can get so educated and get so yeah. smart that we start to think, you know, I got it all together. Mm -hmm. And that's what's so neat about this is it, it's the reminder of I am nothing, but God is everything. You know, like Paul says, um, you know, I want to, I want you to see less of me and more of him. And, mm -hmm. you know, and that's really, so it, it isn't about being smart enough. It's not about being talented enough. It's really just listening and, yeah. and just oh, sitting neat. and hearing him and, and speaking, you know, what you hear him, how he you hear him leading you. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it has nothing to do with my skill or any <laughs> of that. <laughs> so good. Um, it, but we serve such a, an amazing God yeah. that he wants to use us. 
I mean, that's what's the miracle about it. You know, yeah. we're just people with all yeah. sorts of stuff and he wants to <laughs> use us. <laughs> uh, you know, there's a quote that comes to mind and I think it was by, I believe it was John Wesley. It's like, without God, man cannot. And without man, God will not. Exactly. And, I, you know, I, yep. I think about that in, in PHH and how it's like, really, you know, we've had testimonies of people who um, it's like, they have just like four people that they are passionate about them knowing God. They've read them the scriptures, right? They try to bring them to church. They try to do all the stuff. But then whenever they become empowered uh, to hear God's voice for themselves so that they can facilitate a session, then the breakthrough happens. And then the next, you know, just like wildfire. People are like, oh my, I I can hear God's voice for myself. (laughs) Exactly. And, you know, it's amazing. Um, you know, at first when I started this, you know, we'd have these amazing, powerful sessions. And mm-hmm. there was always this little bit of me like, okay, well, that was wonderful, but did it do anything? Mm-hmm. You know, was this just a great experience? You know, mm-hmm. and and I remember in the beginning and, and then meeting people like weeks or months later and them saying, that changed my life. Wow. I, that is like, Wow. I mean, that is, that changes so so much. I mean, it doesn't, it's, it seems like nothing. You're Mm -hmm. spending an hour, three people just listening. You're Mm -hmm. not working. You're not trying. You're not (laughs) even expelling energy, really. (laughs) Um, You know, and, and I I had one person that I did, you know, way back in the fall um, in mentorship. And, yeah. and it, you know, it was somebody, a friend of somebody's. And, mm-hmm. um, and so it, it was a powerful, wonderful session. And then I, I hadn't heard from her and I, you know, was finishing up. And, mm-hmm. and so about three or four months later, she wrote me, she contacted me and said, that changed my whole, that changed so many things in my life. And mm-hmm. that I'm struggling with this sh- issue and I want another session. Wow. And it, it, it's like, mm-hmm. it's so neat to hear down the road, those yeah. things. It's not just about this moment. God is really working mm-hmm. and he is releasing stuff that it, it, it's, it's so easy that it's almost mind boggling. <laughs> <laughs> if that makes any sense, yeah. you know, and, you know, even for myself, I have struggled because of some of my past stuff. I always struggle. What are people thinking about me? And, um, and, you know, sometimes I will, it, it, and I come from a loud family, which I love. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so, yeah. and so, but when I'm out with other people, not everybody's so appreciative of, mm-hmm. <laughs> of that. And so, you know, over the years I've developed this, okay, what are they, you know, what did they think, you know, and you'd walk away sometimes with this little bit of a, oh, did I offend anybody? Mm -hmm. You know, it it, was I too loud? Was I too aggressive or, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. And, you know, after several sessions for myself, just powerful sessions, walking through some of that stuff, some things that had happened to me as a child, um, and the, the Holy Spirit just really came in and, yeah. and I couldn't believe it. In fact, I, I know this sounds crazy, but in one session, I literally saw this little girl grow up Wow! <laughs> and it was wow. such a, a neat thing. And I'm telling mm-hmm. you, I've been in several situations since then that in the past would have just created this anxiety. Um, in me afterwards. And I l- was able to just walk away and feel free yeah, and just feel at peace. And it's like yeah. some of that stuff that I had struggled with was like gone. Mm-hmm. And, and just hearing the Lord's voice at one moment, just saying, just enjoy this, just, mm-hmm. you know, instead of being anxious about it. Oh, um, so it. even in my own life, it's just, it's so neat to see those chains break off. And mm. that's what scripture says, isn't oh, it? Yes. You know, how often Amen. do we read those verses <laughs> and yeah. we just read over it and say, okay, yeah, that was great for them. Yeah. But he meant it for us right now, yeah. right today. That's what, so cool. I love it. Cause it's, you know, it's like, we, we can kind of get, 
uh, we can kind of see the information get glamorized. Like, ah, I know this verse, but whenever we see the transformation and the reality of right. transformation actually manifest in front of us, like praise the right. Lord. <laughs> right. right. Cindy, I, I want to ask this last question, Cindy, you know, for those who are watching, um, hearing your story, um, who they might kind of just be on the fence, like, yeah, maybe I, maybe I'll be a, you know, maybe I am mm-hmm. interested in being involved with prophetic right. heart healing, jump into a three-day training. Do you have any last advice for them? Like, you know, any, anything that, that you would like to share with them? You know, my advice is to just do it. I, <laughs> you know, I, I know it's always scary to do something new. And, 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 you know, there's always a little bit of self-doubt, you know, you know, can I do this? Is this something? Uh, The neat thing about the three-day trainings is they're, they're so, you know, it's almost um, like, there's no danger. It's not, you know, it's, it's an easy way to just experience it. Yeah. And, um, and you don't have to worry about anything. It's, they're not going to ask anything, you know, that's, <laughs> you know, anything unreasonable and, yeah. and you're, you you do not even have to go step too far out of your comfort zone. Yeah. Um, and so it's just, once you just try it, you know, once you just sense that, um, the spirit, um, working through those sessions, it, it kind of ignites you. <laughs> it mm-hmm. really, yeah. um, you know, and so, yeah, just to even just to tr- take that first step, try the three day with, um, you know, it's, it's an easy way to just step in yeah. and, um, and see what happens, you know, <laughs> yeah. um, and let the Lord, you know, lay it out in front of the Lord and say, you know, is this for me or is this not for me? Um, yeah. And I get everybody's in different phases of life. So I, I totally get this. Yeah. Um, you know, if I, when I had all my kids home, it might've been, you know, but I've seen mothers with lots of kids being able to go through this and, yes. and succeed and love it. And, and in fact, it, it energizes them. And now I wish maybe I did have this when I had, you know, when I started um, wow. my family many years ago, it might've saved me a lot of headache. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, you know, um, oh. so, but it, you know, it really does. If you're looking for revival, if you're looking for um, a sense of of a, a Christianity, a relationship with God that is alive and active, if you are looking for where are you, God, this is for you. Oh. <laughs> I mean, mm-hmm. this is where um, it, this can definitely be the answer to that. So, uh, Cindy, thank you so much for sharing your powerful story. Um, man, I, I just praise God for the transformation that has happened. And man, like, I love how, you know, you, you came in through an email, right? We just right. like, hey, like, <laughs> this is what's going on in, in our world. Right. And you're welcome to be involved. And so uh, thank you yeah. for being such a faithful conduit of the Lord, advancing his kingdom. You know, God's word says that the, the um, you know, the, the earth is being filled with the kingdom of God. And right. you are such an incredible uh, representation mm-hmm. of him, Cindy. And so thank you, Cindy. And, and I want to say too, for everyone else watching, um, you know, we will be having a three day, uh, heart healing training next week. I'm going to put all the dates, um, on the comment area so that you can find out how to get involved, how to get connected. You know, you can register there. Um, but all that to say, Cindy, thank you so much again. And, and everyone, uh, God bless you. Yeah. <laughs> you have a blessed a week. And uh, thank you again, Cindy. And uh, y'all have a blessed day. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Cindy. Bye.